there. We're getting there. 65. All right. What's up, guys? Scotty Martin here. Chilling at my house again, doing a little vlog. Just wanted to spend a little more time with you guys today. Uh, you were at the Bassmasters in Michigan. Were they jacking them up? I think there's some several 20-pound bags today. Looks like Alton Jones was uh, the man to beat yesterday. It's going to be interesting to see who's going to pull it off. What do you think? Uh, Let's see, Brandon Pollock was up there pretty high. Team Heart Patrol, that's what I'm talking about. Who else is leading right now? I haven't checked online. What is going on, guys? All right, so let's get to business here. We're doing these vlogs, and we're doing uh, having you guys send in questions. Questions, fishing questions, and I'm going to answer them for you. So all you got to do is go to my Instagram. All you got to do is go to my Facebook. And by the way, if you're watching this on Facebook or you're watching this on YouTube, you're watching a replay, and that means you can watch this live on Periscope. Download the app on your mobile app store. It's free on your mobile iPhone or an Android of some sort. You can get online, and uh, you can actually correspond. You can drop us comments. Love you too, man. What's up, Dark Knight Slayer? Uh, a bunch of people on there giving me props, asking questions, being part of what we're doing. Team Heart Patrol, look at that. It's like a volcano of hearts. Jacob Wheeler better watch out. Hey, give Jacob Wheeler some love, too. You know, I don't want to turn this thing into, into this big, you know, this big competition. I mean, he kind of started the whole thing last week, and, and I don't want to turn this into this big fight. So I want Jacob to get some love. Give Jacob some love. We're both here trying to do some stuff. But I do have some proof, by the way. You've heard me talk about some of the things that Jacob Wheeler's been doing to get some likes, okay? So we talked about how he had the middle school and the high school all sitting around tapping away for hearts. And we talked about how we, we found out that his grandmother rigged up an apparatus on her sewing machine to give him a bunch of likes, okay? All right? Yeah, he blocked me. That's right. So he can't watch this. That's good. But he rigged up a sew, his grandmother rigged up a sewing machine. Then she got the whole sewing machine team, okay? The whole grandma team, Team Jacob Wheeler Grandma Sewing Machine, hashtag that. And, uh, and I have proof, guys. I sent some of the Team Heart Patrol out on a reconnaissance mission to Indianapolis. Big Worm 10 went out. Snazzy Jeff 55 went out. They were hiding in the bushes taking pictures. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about, guys. I'm going to show you proof. I'm going to show you proof right here. They sent me the pictures. All right, you ready? All right, here we go. All right. All right, now look. You think I'm kidding. Watch this. Team Grandma having the Team Grandma meeting. That's what I'm talking about. See, there they are. They're all getting ready with their iPhones, getting all ready for Jacob Wheeler's Periscope. That's it right there. Team Grandma sewing machine. That yep, proof. Bam. Got him. It's okay. That was reconnaissance. Thank you, Big Worm 55, for sending that photo in. That was awesome. That was awesome. Proof. That's a love. I love proof. Now, we talked about the middle school. We talked about the middle school doing it. Look, look, we have somebody in that class. Look, this is what they sent. Uh huh. Yeah, there they are, tapping away. See, Jacob, that's not fair. You can't, look, dude, all I have, all I have is my trusty fans. All I have is my trusty fans, you guys, tapping away. I don't have whole sewing machine teams, and I don't have all that. And, and matter of fact, here's the icing on the cake, guys. All right, Snazzy Jeff 12 sent this in. It's another, another uh, team, Team Hearts. All right, let me find it right here. All right, now, you think I'm kidding, right? Watch this, watch this. This is the sewing machine. I've got a, a picture of the rigged up sewing machine from Team Grandma, Jacob Wheeler's house. Here we go, there we go, bam, there it is. See the finger apparatus, see the iPhone? That's it right there, guys. That's the sewing machine rigged up. That is Jacob Wheeler's way that he tries to get hearts. That is what he's doing, and look, we have got that, we have, we've got proof, we have proof. So that is what is going on. Jacob Wheeler gets some of that. Uh-huh, we caught you. We caught you. Appreciate you, Team Heart Patrol. Send me those pictures in. Reconnaissance. That's what I'm talking about. All right, now let's get back to the business. I'm going to handle a couple things real quick. We love it. What's up, Conroe, Texas? Appreciate you. We got, we got him. We caught Wheeler. We caught him. But give him some love. He needs some love, okay? All right? So look, here's what we're going to do, guys. We're going to be giving away some of these shirts. Look, the punch, right? Team Martin, Lake Washita. Who wants one of these? All right, here's what we're going to do, guys. We're going to make this fun. If anyone breaks the 20,000 heart tap away thing, okay, what I want you to do, if you get 20,000 hearts, you tap 20,000 hearts on this video, the first five people to do that, I'm sending them a shirt. Now, here's what you're going to have to do. You're going to have to screenshot your phone, okay? Screenshot your phone with the 20,000, over 20,000 hearts. Screenshot it. 
Direct message me on Instagram or message me on Facebook, Scott Martin Challenge. Yeah, you hit 30,000, well, you better start tapping away, dude. If you hit 30,000, that means you're getting a shirt, dude. The first five people to get over 20,000 hearts on this video is getting some shirts, guys. So tap away and message me. Screenshot it. This is awesome. All right, we're going to have some fun with that. All right, so now. I'm not sure how you see your hearts. You go to the, your, your thing there, and when you tap away, especially in the replay, and you can see what you've, what you've done. It's not real hard uh, to find it, but it's not real easy either. So I, I'm not the best at telling you how to figure out how you've done it, but I've had several people screenshot me. 50,000 went a fishing trip. That's pretty good. We might have to be doing some things like that. So here's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be answering some questions from you guys on Instagram. We're going straight to the meat. Let me get over to my Instagram page. All right, here we go. All right, you ready, guys? Appreciate you on board, 107 on board. We're killing it. Keep those hearts coming. All right, so here we go. All right. The Real Country Boy. The Real Country Boy. Are you on there? Real Country Boy, you on there? I've got a question. i got to answer your question. The best, his question is, what's the best way to set the hook on topwater frogs, you got to lay the pipe to them, guys. You got to really, you got to really set the hook on them. But here's the key: you want to let them eat it just a little bit. You want to make sure that that bass has engulfed the frog and has taken the frog down before you set the hook. The other thing that you really need is you need braided line, okay? And you need a pretty good stiff rod. Braid is very important. I never throw a frog on monofilament or even fluorocarbon. It has to be braid because you can set the hook much, much better. So, as soon as you see the strike, wait till you know that the, the frog is gone before you set the hook. You want to just say to yourself a lot of times, there's one, then reel down, frog's gone, set the hook, put the pipe to them, okay? That's what you're going to want to do when you're frog fishing. So, all right. Second question from Brother Tim Jr. All right, Brother Tim Jr., you're on there? Got your question loaded up. All right, here we go. Brother Tim Jr., how to locate fish when you're ledge fishing. All right, ledge fishing. Here's what you're going to want to do. You're going to want to go back and forth over the ledge from deep to shallow, deep to shallow, back and forth, and you're going to look for that look for that bait. You're going to want to look for that bait. And number, number one, most important, you're going to want to look for those blobs on your screen. I use the Garmin DownScan, and what it looks like, what I tell people, is it looks like, if it's bass, it looks like little tic-tacs along the bottom, okay, spaced out. So as that ledge is going up and it flattens out, there'll be little tic-tacs along the bottom, okay? Nothing way up here in the water column. Little tic-tacs along the bottom. You see that along with some bait in the area, that's a really good spot. And until I see that, I don't fish. I idle around and I idle around and I idle around until I see that. Now, the th what things to look for is look for creek channels, look for creek channel splits and points, and also look for some of the steeper drop-offs. Find the ones that drop off really fast, okay? The ones that just gradually drop off aren't as good as the ones that just drop straight off, okay? That, for some reason, those super steep drop-offs work the best. Great question. All right. Here is one. It's kind of a neat one here. Immaculate, Immaculate sent me a question, and he says his question is, any advice? No, I'm sorry about that. All right, have you ever fished with Charlie's Worms? If so, how did I like them? Yeah. Charlie's Worms is an awesome worm. They were one of my very first sponsors. Charlie Envinger, the guy that started Charlie's Worms, I've known him forever. It's a great worm. We've sold them here at our marina. I've caught thousands of bass on Charlie's Worms. They are great. They, uh, the new guy that owns it has done great jobs with it. Charlie's Worms is really good. I like Charlie's Worms a lot, so good stuff. Good stuff. Best lure. This is from Caleb Keith 01. Best lure for late October in the south. Best lure for late October in the south. Right there. Right there. Top water. These fish are schooling in late October. That's right. I will read my my that message for sure. Almost at 1,300 likes. 20,000. 20,000. We're getting T-shirts, boys. Come on. First five. To send me the 20,000 picture gets t-shirts. That's right. All right. Top waters are great. Okay. Other things that are great are lipless crankbaits. Okay. I've got a whole box of them here. Check it out. 
Check it out. Look, keep those hearts coming, guys. What is going on? Yeah. All right. There's all my lipless crankbaits. Loving the hearts. Keep the hearts coming. I am showing you my secret stash, man. This is like inside my tackle box, all right? All right? This isn't sponsor stuff. This is stuff that I just have, right? I have every brand you can imagine in there. And there's different times I throw different things. But anyways, lipless crankbaits are good in the south in late October. And topwater lures are good for... What's up? What's up, Steve? What you doing, man? I meant to call you today, buddy, but I've been real busy. It's been super hectic around here. But I will be giving you boys a call and see what you and Noah are up to. All right. So topwater's lipless crankbaits. That is awesome. Awesome. Come on now. Keep it, keep it clean or we're going to be deleting you there, buddy. Okay? You don't want to get banned. We're keeping it clean. All right, here we go. Ablum 919. All right? All right? Here we go. Any advice on being a co-angler in the tournament on a boat? Any advice on being a co-angler in a tournament on a boat? Yeah, here's my advice on being a co-angler. Fish a shaky head, fish a drop shot, fish a Carolina rig. Try to fish places that the, the pro's not. Try to really focus on things like that. You know, if your pro's going down the bank flipping at every piece of cover, don't flip behind him. If you flip behind him, you're probably not going to catch. You're probably not going to catch um, any fish. So, fish something else. You know. Fish a shaky head, fish a drop shot, fish something a little off the bank. That's my advice to you. And just, just, all right. So we're going to have to, we're going to have to get rid of some of these people here. We're going to block that guy. All right. Come on, guys. Keep it clean. Keep it clean. I'm blocking them. I'm blocking them. All right. Yep. I will see any more come up. We're going to be getting rid of them. Okay. Don't do that, man. Come on. We're having fun here. We're keeping it clean. Keep it clean. So that is the deal. All right, po I apologize. Yeah, snakeheads are snakeheads down in Miami. I, I don't really fish for them much, but I might do a show this year on snakeheads. So it's um, it should be a fun show. Top water frogs, those things kill it. They kill it. Keep the hearts coming, guys. Blowing it up. I'm thinking some people are going to be getting some shirts. And if again, if you're watching this in replay and you want a shirt, be one of the first five people to message me on Instagram a picture of your screenshot of twenty thousand. I need a picture. Proof is the picture, 20,000 hearts. We're going to be getting in touch with you getting shirts, okay? That's what we're doing. All right. And also, if you're watching this on YouTube, subscribe to our Periscope channel. If you're watching this on Facebook, this is a replay. And subscribe to our Periscope channel. Download Periscope on your mobile phone, and we're doing all kind of live stuff, okay? All right. Now, let's jump over into a couple more questions here, guys. What are the best crankbaits to use during cold winter months in small ponds and lakes with little cover? All right, that's Salt Life 804. Salt Life 804, you, you there? What's up, Jason White? Salt Life 804, you there? All right. I like this shirt, too. It's pretty cool. Salt Life 804 had a good question. What is the best crankbait to use in cold months in a lake that has little cover? Very good question. All right, cold months lipless crankbait, especially like that has a little cover, because you can just burn the shorelines with it, and this tight wobble of a lipless crankbait, okay, and all that rattle that that lipless crankbait has, makes all kind of noise, and it makes those fish bite it. Hey, look at those hearts right there, guys. Woo, keep the hearts coming. Keep the hearts coming. All right. So that's why lipless crankbait is awesome in cold months in a lake that has a little cover because a, a lipless crankbait isn't the most weedless, okay? I know you're getting carpal tunnel. I appreciate you guys. We're going to be over 300,000 after this one. I have a feeling, so I appreciate you very much. The other thing that works really good is uh, regular crankbaits like a, like a shad wrap, like a Rapala shad wrap, or let's find one right here. Here's an old school one. Here's an old school one. This is an old... Uh, yeah, hard to beat a shad wrap, number five in cold weather, little cover, that is great. The thing is all jacked up. But anyways, this is a little bandit, okay? It's a real thin bandit, has a small little small little uh, coffin lip to it. I don't know what that is, okay? That's just old line. But that has a tight, tight wobble. Thank you, I appreciate that. My dad is awesome. A very tight wobble, and that's what you want in cold weather. You don't want a real big wobble like a big square bill, okay? A big square bill in cold water is not the, not the thing to throw, but something with a real tight wobble. Shad wraps or things like that, all right? All right. 
All right, fresh water or salt late to this, fresh water, salt water. We're talking fresh water right now. That's what we're doing. We'll do with some salt water stuff. That's a flat max. That's right. That's right, flat max. We're talking, uh, we're talking fresh water right now. We're giving you some tips on that. So that is about it on the Instagram. Uh, when you fished last day, what did you... Yes, we had to use the FLW boats on the last day of the Forcewood Cup, which is a little bit of an inconvenience, to be honest with you. I wish I was in my boat. It uh, feels weird being in another boat. All right, hello from Arkansas. What's up, guys? Um, grouper on a rope. Yeah, I love the grouper on a rope. We might be doing some more of those here soon. I'm going to shoot another show or two this this uh, before uh, the season starts. We might get one of those in there. All right, what's the go-to on Okeechobee? Go-to on Okeechobee for big fish is either a big swim bait or flipping the heavy cover. We're coming into the fall, so October, November, December time frame, flipping those high mats is hard to beat. When do you use jigs? When do you use jigs? Yeah, you know, I use jigs all the time. Whenever you want to catch a big fish, use jigs. Around docks, around stumps, around trees, places like that, around rocks, jigs are great. All right. Let's see. Do I have success with flukes? Yes, I've caught lots of fish on flukes. Here on Lake Okeechobee, believe it or not, watermelon red, and any time you get around in a lake that has a lot of bluegill spawning, watermelon red or green pumpkin fluke, put on like a 5 aught trocar offset hook, 10 pound line and just cast it up there and let it sink almost like a Cinco. And when you so let it sink like a Cinco, it just wobbles down through the water and those fish will jump out and get it. So flukes work great. Keep the hearts coming. Loving it, guys. A fluke is one of my favorite as well. Double fluke rigs. Awesome. Absolutely. Oh my gosh. Somebody said they're at 20, 256,000 hearts. All right. Well, if you're 256,000 hearts, you're dumb sending you a case of shirts. That's what I'm talking about. Bam! 256,000. All right. Here's what we got that. Oh, by the way, my Titline GV. That's my bait, the punch. Okeechobee, the punch. Here was a different color I showed you yesterday. It had little chartreuse tentacles. This one's a little more attractive. This is Okeechobee Crawl. You know, we use a punch uh, punch skirt down here in Okeechobee all the time. And, uh, and I like this bait because it actually has the punch skirt material built into the bait. Very sweet. So, very, very good. Loving it, guys. Thank you so much. Yes, it's a modified beaver. Beavers work great, and punch skirts work great. So when you put the two together, you've got the punch. That's what I'm talking about. Bam! All right. So what else can we talk about? Nothing. I'll be back tomorrow. I appreciate you guys so much. And again, <laughs> Periscope, Periscope just crashed. We're probably going to crash the entire universe on Periscope, Kaleidoscope, whatever you want to call it. But anyways, yes, it's out for purchase. Go to Tightline GV. Thank you so much for all the big support. Keep the hearts coming, guys. And again, if you're watching this in replay, kill it. Subscribe to Periscope. Jump on board with us. We're going to do all kind of cool stuff coming up. Fishing adventures, off-road stuff. Just great. We might even wrestle an alligator. That's what I'm talking about. We're going to be wrestling alligators. So you better get on Periscope because we're going to be having fun. What's up, SoCal? I'm going to be heading out your way, catch some big spots with old Cody Meyer. All right, so anyways. I'm sure Jacob Wheeler's getting his grandma and all of them all geared up for his next Periscope. Love you too, man. And um, we'll have some fun with it. So anyways, give Jacob some love. He's doing a great job. And uh, I didn't give Jacob any props this time. So uh, I've given him props on his awesome little buzz bait every day. Maybe he'll give me props on my rods, this Periscope. Okay? All right, guys. We're going to be uh, filming more SMC soon. And they'll be airing on NBC Sports in January. All right. We'll see you guys. <laughs>